Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome to Impact Church Nova Online. My name is Robert Brooks, and my wife Mignon and I pastor Impact Church Nova located here in Ashburn, Virginia. I'm so excited to be with you on this morning, and I trust you are having a wonderful week. A uh, great start to your Sunday morning. Uh, praise God, and we know God has extraordinary things in store for you. Uh, I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you to all those who uh, are tuned in on today. I want to give you uh, an opportunity to still go ahead and grab your coffee, your tea, your water, whatever you may uh, be having as you're relaxing in your home, joining us here. Uh, we thank you for that. And to all of those who are watching us for the very first time, we say thank you for tuning in today. We believe the Lord has a due season word for you. So I want to just encourage you to uh, stay locked in, continue to listen to uh, what the Spirit of God is saying to you because God is making a difference in your life on today. Uh, we started out on last week uh, just talking about uh, the prayer focus that we believe the Spirit of God had for our ministry here. And we're going to dive a little deeper into that on today. Uh, so we'll go before the Lord in prayer in just a moment here. Uh, again, just want to say thank you to all our family, friends, and loved ones who are watching us, partnering with us. Uh, as I believe as we uh, continue to venture on into 2022, God has extraordinary things in store for us. I uh, can't give shouts out to everyone, but just want to say a special hello to, you know, uh, my Pastor Mignon and I's parents who are watching us from afar as well. And I want to give a shout out to my man, John, back there in the D. You know, glad you're tuning in with us. And I know God has great things in store for you as well. So let's go ahead and just go before the Lord in prayer. Uh, go ahead and bow your heads with me if you would. Heavenly Father, we just say thank you today for uh, everything that you have for us. Thank you for breathing life into us today. Thank you for a fresh start. Uh, thank you for the spirit of restoration. Thank you, Father God, for your word today, which we know is a lamp into our feet. Surely it's a light into our pathway. Uh, we ask, Father God, that as we uh, have ears to hear what the Spirit of God has to say, for, say to us today. We thank you that your word is the difference maker. I ask that you increase in me as I decrease in the flesh. We pray it's all of you and none of me that any man or woman should see here today. And we thank you, Father, for every great thing that will come forth as a result of uh, your word on today. So we give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor for that. And we also say thank you, Daddy, in advance for the men, women, and children who be saved, coming to the knowledge of the truth as a result of your word on today. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. But I want to have you go over with me over to 2 Kings chapter 8, if you would. And uh, just want to give you a brief recap of what it began on last week. You know, as I mentioned, you know, uh, we didn't do some, uh, as some would do, I guess we would say the, the word of the Lord. But we do have, I guess, what the Spirit of God is just... Uh, uh, placed in my heart in the direction that I believe our prayer focus and faith focus is supposed to be uh, for this particular year. And we started out on last week talking about restoration. Now, restoration is such a broad topic, as it were. You can paint that, uh, you can paint the canvas with a number of things. And we're going to do a little bit of that over the course of the next couple of weeks. We're really just going to break down what restoration may look like uh, in your life, what it may look like in my life, what it may look like in your business, etc., etc. Because God is bringing us back to a place uh, where we're postured and positioned once again for success. Now, I talked about it last week. We started out, and I won't go back to that particular scripture, but we talk, We started out talking about the Shunammite woman. And one of the things that we said about this Shunammite woman is that uh, she had this son who got, who got raised from the dead through the prophet Elijah and restored her son to life. So we saw the power of, uh, the resurrection power of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ come into play at that particular time. And one of the things she said during that particular time is she said, it is well. So, you know, as I mentioned to us on last week, our declaration should be, God is my restore and it is well for me in 2022. So go ahead, direct your attention back over to chapter eight for me. We're going to begin right there. I'm going to pick up reading in verse number six. The first two, I'm sorry, verse number three, the first two verses speak to or talk about uh, how God has restored her son to life. The prophet Elijah comes back to her and 
tells her that there's going to be a famine in the land. I want you to go and dwell in the land of the Philistines for about seven years. And we're going to pick up in verse number three, where it begins right there. Glory to God. It says, and it came to pass at the end of seven years that the woman returned from the land of the Philistines. It says, and she went to make appeal to the king for her house and for her land. Then the king talked to Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, tell me, please, all the things Elijah has done. So now the uh, Gehazi, one of the prophet service, is meeting with the king, and he's telling him several accounts of all the magnificent things that uh, the prophet Elijah has done through the power of God. And one of the things that he's telling her about is this Shunammite woman. So let's continue reading there in verse number uh, I believe what is that? Verse number five. Praise God. It says, now it happened as he was telling the king how he had restored the dead to life, that there's a, there was a woman whose son he had restored to life, appealing to the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, my Lord, O king, this is the woman and this is her son, whom Elijah restored to life. And when the king asked the woman, she said to, she told him, so the king appointed a certain officer for her saying, restore all that was hers and all the proceeds of the field from the day that she left until the land, day that she left the land until right now. So we said it on last week, God is a restorer. And I believe that God wants to restore, wants to resurrect some things in your life. And I talked about how in 2022, I want you to put and place your confidence in the reality of restoration. I want you to be confident in the fact that God is a restorer. So we started out reading in 2 Kings chapter 8, but I'm telling you, there's so many verses of scripture where you see God doing exactly what he says he'll do. He restores and brings dead things to life. So the question is, what is it that you need restored in your life? And we talked about how, you know, in the years past or over the last few years, there's been a lot of changes. There's been a lot of things that have taken place, but we want to put the past in, in the past. We want to be able to move forward and step into the next phase of what God has for us, recognizing that he is a store, restorer. He specializing, specializes in bringing things back to life. Now, let me give you a definition of the word restore. It literally means to bring back to a former condition or vigor. It means to heal. It means to cure. It means to repair. It means to mend, to rebuild, to revive, to resurrect. It means to recover, to renew, to resuscitate a thing. God wants to bring forth renewal. He wants to bring forth recovery. He wants to rebuild some things in your life. He wants to revive some things that have been seemingly dead in your life. He wants to manifest, cure, praise God, and restore back to health some things, not just physically in your body, but some relationships and other things that may have been unhealthy. God wants to bring forth the cure and revive those things in your life, praise God. Our hope must and has to be in the power of the living God and his ability to do what he said he will do. He will manifest himself because his plan for your life, his plan for my life, his plan for your business, his plan for your sons and daughters, his plan for your family is restoration. But we have to be confident in his ability to do it. That's why I said in 2022, we want to have confidence in the reality, the fact, faith that God can and is a restore for you and I. Glory to God. Everything that the enemy has attempted to steal from you in 2018, 2019, 2020, now it's time for you to commission God and say, Lord, I accept the word of the Lord for me. I accept restoration from my household. And just as you said, it is now time for the enemy to restore sevenfold of everything he's attempted to steal and take away from my life. Don't let worry. Don't let mistrust. 
Don't let what things have looked like over the last three years steal your hope in the fact that God is a restorer. So we started out on last week talking about there were three factors in restoration that you were going to have to hold on to. And we talked about it sets the groundwork for manifestation of restoration. Those three things were hope, faith, obedience, and we see it in what we just read in these verses of scripture. Now, we talked about how the man of God tells the woman, the Shunammite woman, to leave the land, to go away for seven years, and then make your way back. Now, one of the things we didn't read, one of the verses of scripture says the moment he told her to do that, or he told her arise and to go, the woman left. She did exactly what God told her to do. She was obedient to move. She was obedient to uh, let the spirit of God to, uh, uh, direct her as she went over into the land of the Philistines. And she was sensitive, sensitive enough to when it was time to come back at the end of those seven years, all things were going to be restored. She had hope. She had faith and she operated in obedience and it brought forth a magnificent manifestation. Now I wanna take you over to another scripture that I believe is very familiar for you, but I wanna place it on the screen. I want us to read it together because I wanna put this in remembrance in your heart right now. Go over to 2 Corinthians chapter five. Somebody say, I am restored because my God is a restorer, yes. Your God is a restorer, and he wants to do tremendous, magnificent things in your life on today. 2 Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter 5, it says this in verse number 17. Let's read it together. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Listen to what it says right there once again. All things have become new. Now, the moment you became born again, the Bible tells us that the Spirit of God comes to dwell on the inside of us. We call that the Holy Spirit within. Your spirit now gets regenerated. You now uh, have the fruit of the Spirit that have come to embody and be, be planted on the inside of you so that they can grow. God has made you a new person in Christ Jesus. Now, if you're one of those people who you haven't made a decision for Christ today or just yet, I want to give you an opportunity at the end of this message today to now come over to the other side, the right side, and accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior so you can walk in everything that the Spirit of God is talking about today. You are, we are, a new creature in Christ Jesus. Now, one of the definitions for the word restoration we mentioned there was the word renew. So I want us to think about that. God has made you a new creature in Christ Jesus. And because of some of the traumatic things that have taken place in your 2019, in your 2020, some of us have forgotten the authority and the dominion that we walk in. God has birthed you into in this earth to succeed, to have dominion, to walk in power, to excel, and to win. And one of the ways we get back to doing that is remembering or having a recollection or recalling to mind of who we are in him. It's time to renew our thinking and our thought process so God can work with us from the inside out. Now go over to Ephesians chapter 2 for me. I'm sorry, chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. <clears throat> Now, it says something here over in verse number 22. It says, you were taught with regard to your former way of life, to put off your old self. Now, I want you to take a moment, underline that, highlight that in your Bible if you're able to do so. It says, you were taught with regard to your former way of life, put off your old self. It says, being, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires to be made new in the multitude of your minds. And listen to what verse 24 says, and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness 
and holiness. Now, I know we said a mouthful right there, but I want you to go back and highlight that if you can. Now, I just read it to you from the NIV version, but for whatever version you're reading it in, it reminds us that we want to put off the old man and we want to put on the new man, or as it says, says here, the new self created to be like God and true righteousness and holiness. This scripture reminds us that we have to become more righteous minded versus sin conscious. We have to be at a place where we're willing and desiring to just be right and do what's right. And the way we get back to that, we clean the slate today. So now's the day, now's the time and opportunity to clean the slate, to take this opportunity to say, I'm drawing a line in the sand, devil, and I'm stepping over this line, and I'm saying right now that I am no longer that person I used to be. I'm forgetting those things that are behind me, and I'm pressing forward to the mark of the high call of Jesus Christ because he has restoration waiting and available for me. I don't know about you, but whoo, that sounds real good to me. Glory to God. You aren't the same person you used to be. And it's time right now to restore. And part of that restoration starting starts with having a renewed sense of who you are. We are spirit beings. I know I'm getting ahead of myself right here. I want to show this to you in scripture, but we want to make sure that we know that we aren't the same person that we used to be. Now, I submit to you that the moment the clock switched over into 2022, you put some things behind you. The year, the calendar flipped. It was no longer the same day, no longer the same week, no longer the same year or the same month. Things changed. And I'm submitting to you, it's time for us to commit to being changed from the inside out. Proverbs 23 says this to us. I love this scripture. It says, for as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. What have you been thinking about? What have you been meditating on? What have you been mulling over? What have you been uh, you know, chewing and digesting and allowing to enter into your spirit, to enter into your mind? What are we physically putting in our bodies? We, are, we know that old saying, you are what you eat. Well, you know what? We are an accumulation of everything that we allow to come through our ear gates and our eye gates and we allow to physically enter these miles. But I submit to you today, there's a new you. God wants to renew some things. God is doing some great things in your life. So what does that mean for me? That means we're not gonna continue to have laps, lapses in judgment. We're not gonna continue to just you know, live our lives without any borders or whatever, without any parameters and just do what we wanna do because we believe that we're the author of this life. You know what, we're not. God's the author of this life. He's the one who breathes life into us daily. He's the one who allows us to walk, to talk, to see the sun, moon, and the stars. He's the one who gives us our being, glory to God. So we want to get back to that place where we're saying, I'm putting off the old man, and I'm stepping over into this new arena. I'm turning the corner. I'm turning the leaf, praise God, flipping the page, as it were, to this new life and renewing the right sense of who I am in Christ Jesus. That means no more deception, no more lying, no more operating in anger and being insensitive, no more uh, you know, deceit or anything like that. We wanna get back to that place of just walking in love, being kind, operating with honesty, operating with integrity, glory to God, because that's the new person that God has created you to be. The spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, is living big on the inside of you right now. That means you're operating with joy. You have peace. You have patience. You have long suffering towards people. So the same individual that you would have smacked in their mouth, you probably would have went off on last year. The new you, the renewed spirit, the renewed you on the inside is saying, I won't operate like that today. I'm eliminating cuss for my vocabulary. I'm too intelligent to speak that way, to stoop to that particular level. I'm going to elevate and raise my level of operation and how I do things to the space of righteousness because that's who I am in Christ Jesus. Now go to another script, scripture with me if you would. Go over to Romans chapter eight. We're gonna have to forgive some folks. 
We're going to have to operate in honesty and integrity. But most importantly, we're going to have to walk in love and do it from an unconditional perspective. Now, Romans chapter 8 says this to us in verse number 10. Now, I'm reading this from the NIV version. It says, but if Christ is in you, come on, somebody say, he's in me. He's in me. He says, but if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. You are, once again, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You're no longer, excuse me, the person you were last week, last month, last year. There's a new you, glory to God. And for some of you, the moment you accept Jesus into your life at the end of this message, you'll see that there will be a difference that once again immediately breaks forth in your heart. You won't say, well, people say, well, it's supposed to be this amazing feeling and something tingling. You're not gonna, you may not feel anything, but you will automatically be different on the inside because now your heart will be changed for the better because God is the righteousness of Christ. The righteous is righteous, so shall righteousness dwell and live big on the inside of you. Now, I read this particular scripture for us as well because I believe this should remind us, as it said in the latter part, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. Well, God is a spirit. And the Bible also tells us that we're created in his likeness and in his image. So if God is a spirit, then obviously we are spirits as well. In fact, 2 Thessalonians even tells us the same thing, that you know we are a spirit being who lives in a body and possesses a soul. We are three-part being, spirit, soul, and body. And your spirit has to be renewed to a different way of thinking if restoration is going to break forth the way we desire it to be. There's time for a change for you and for me. And it starts from the inside out. We used to sing this song, there's something on the inside working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Oh, what a change in my heart. I submit to you that Holy Spirit on the inside God on the inside of you is working to do something supernatural so you can see a significant change on the outside. There's going to be people who say, there's something different about her. There's something different about him. And it would just be the manifest glory of God that will be exuding from your being because you've made a decision to renew some things in your heart, to renew your life, to renew your thinking back to its original created nature that you are the one who's supposed to operate in authority, operate in dominion, and operate in righteousness and rule and reign in this lifetime. Now, I want to give you a few things that I believe that'll help us in our renewal and our recognition of the fact that it starts from the inside out. Three little simple things and we're going to be done today. But I want you to say this, to say this with me. My life is restored and it is well. Come on now. Yes, God is a restorer and he's doing some great things for you. So go over to James chapter four for me. James chapter four. Woo, I'm excited about this. I'm excited about restoration. I'm excited about where God's taking you, what God's doing in your life. I'm excited about this renewal that's taking place right now from the inside out, praise the Lord. So the first thing I wanna say is we wanna renew our commitment to the things of God. We want to renew our commitment to the Father. Glory to God. James chapter 4 says this. It says, come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Now, some translations or the one that we're most familiar with, I'm most familiar with, the King James Version says, draw nigh to him and he'll draw nigh to you. See, as we set our hearts to draw close to God, God will draw close to us. God will always go the extra mile for us to have the ability to be close to him. He wants to be close to you. 
Even when we, as the Bible said, were yet sinners, Christ still died for the ungodly. Even when we weren't attempting to, desiring to be, God was still standing by our side, still right there, as the word says, never leaving us, never forsaking us. So I want you to make sure as we're making changes from the inside out. See, we want things to be restored, but there's a process. And this part of the process starts with me. I have to renew myself from the inside out. So, so then there can be what's on the inside beginning to now flourish and come forth on the outside. He says, come close to him and he'll come close to you. Now, the last part says, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. And you might be saying, well, pastor, that's not me. Well, at the end of the day, each and every one of us are still a work in progress, which also means we all still have work to do. We're not, none of us are uh, perfectionists. None of us have arrived. So there's always an element where we could say, let me do more of this. Let me enhance that in my relationship. Think about things in the natural. You might be a great husband. You may be a great uh, wife. You might be a great son, great daughter. You may be the perfect employee in your mind's eye. But you know what? There's always some area whereby we can become even better. There's this tremendous book, and you may have read it before. It talks about going from, it's actually called From Good to Great. We all have, you know, have some tremendous qualities, but none of us have arrived, and we all have the propensity to come up higher. So I'm challenging you to take your commitment to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. Renew that thing. What does renew mean? To make new again, just like it was in the days of, days of the beginning. Start fresh and renewing your commitment to God. It says we want to be loyal to him. Now, when I read that, it reminded me of the scripture in Revelation where God said, you know, let's get back to things or looking at things as God is our first love. God's our first love. And we love him because he loves us. Glory to God. I want to challenge you to renew your commitment to him. Second Corinthians says this to us in chapter seven, verse number one. It says, therefore, since we have great promises or set, therefore, since these great promises are ours, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that contaminates and defiles the body and the spirit. And let's bring our consecration to completeness in the reverential fear of God. Let's get back to God being our first love. Let's get back to reverence for God and reverence for the kingdom things that matter. We've gotten away from some things and we're talking about renewing our lives so that we can see the full manifestation of restoration come forth. But it starts with us renewing our thinking, renewing our spirit, renewing and bringing forth some rejuvenation of some things in our body, spirit, soul, and body, making that commitment to change, but making that commitment to the father. This means uh, new year's resolutions that you've committed to already. Stick to them, stay on them, commit to those particular things. If it's dieting or something that, that, of that nature you're committing to, stick to it. I want you to stick to the word. Some of you have already started things like reading the Bible through in one year. Stick to it. Don't allow yourself to wane after the first 30 days or the first 60 days. Stick to it. Your commitment to the Father is going to yield great results. But most importantly, it's going to change you from the inside out. So renew your commitment to the Father. Great things are happening for us. Now, second thing I'll say to you, uh, before we go over to that, I also want to say this. Stop prolonging the thing that God is telling you to do. Mm. Amen. I thought I'd throw that in there. For some of us, that could mean just growing closer to God. And I just mentioned maybe reading more of my Bible or maybe ensuring that I have more prayer time, that I'm fasting on a consistent basis. You know, make sure we do those things, but stop prolonging that commitment. Make sure that you move on it. Now, those are spiritual matters, but what is it in the natural that God has told you to do? That you're dragging your feet on committing to. 
Stop prolonging commitment. So maybe that could be a relationship that you know, you're supposed to be connected with, but you've been dragging your feet with it. Stop prolonging it. It reminds me of Matthew chapter 25, and I'm, I'm, the scripture's not up there. You can write it down for your notes. Familiar verse is a scripture for you, but remember the story of the 10 virgins. I think it's over Matthew chapter 25, the first 13 verses or so. And it talks about how there was these 10, you know, uh, 10 virgins and that, you know, they were the brides who supposed to now hook up with the bridegroom. And, you know, it tells a story of how five of them were prepared and five of them weren't prepared. Five of them, you know, goes into this house, uh, you know, with a lamp supposedly to wait for God uh, filled with oil. Five of them go in and they have no oil at all. They're not prepared. They're prolonging things per or uh, what's that word? Procrastinating in what God had told them to do or what the spirit of God was functioning. Don't get caught slipping, procrastinating and prolonging your commitment to the father. Now, I say it that way is because what happened is we know that, you know, uh, Christ is the bridegroom. It's like, uh, you know, in theory, we're, we become married to the things of God. Now, these other five versions, when the bridegroom comes, it says that they didn't have any oil. Once the alarm sounded that he's coming or enough oil to make it through the night, I'm paraphrasing this. You can go back and read it on your own time. So they begin to ask the five who had some, can we get some of your oil? And they're like, no, no, no. You should have been prepared. You shouldn't have procrastinated. You shouldn't have waited because you know what was coming about. We know restoration. We know glorious things are happening for us. Don't wait till the trumpet sounds to decide, let me get in on that. Now back to the story. They leave to now go get some oil to make it through the night and be prepared you know, or to now get themselves prepared at the ninth hour, the bridegroom comes and then the door gets shut. And by the time they make it back, they say, hey, you can't even come in. <sighs> Procrastination, prolonging their commitment. God has been waiting on some of you for your whole life. He's been calling you. He's been chasing you. He's been with you by your side. And you'll say things like, Lord, if you get me through this, whoo, I'll serve you all the days of my life. Lord, if you get me through this, I'll do this. God has gotten you through that. God has been there all the while, but yet you're still dating him rather than committing to him. Glory to God. Let's go ahead and make that commitment today and renew your commitment to the things of God and become yoked with the Father. Secondly, I'll say this, renew your confidence. Now, what I mean by that is confidence of God on the inside of you. Remember, the moment you became born again, the Spirit of God came to live on the inside of you. But we want to be confident in that power that lives within us. Glory to God. Now, Philippians chapter 4 says this to us in verse number 13. And I know this is familiar for each and every one of us. It says in the Amplified Version, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. Now, you may be reading from the King James or New King James, and it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, if we know that to be Bible and to be true, that means we're putting our confidence in his ability and not necessarily in our own. So I want to encourage you to renew your confidence of God on the inside of you. His ability to do in you and through you all the things that needs to happen to allow you to fulfill your purpose and your destiny. Allow restoration to manifest in your life. How do we do that? By being confident in the reality of his ability to bring forth that restoration, not ourselves. Glory to God. That scripture goes on to say, I have strife. I have uh, strength, um, I'm sorry, for all things in Christ who empowers me. It says, I am ready for anything. I am equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. And I love this part, what the Amplifier says right here. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. There is no thing or nothing you can not accomplish in God. Praise God. And by, in fact, the Bible reminds us all things are possible to him who what? 
believes. And part of our hope and our faith and our obedience, we talked about believing. See, that Shunammite woman believed that when she left her property and left her land, the same way that God resurrected her son from the dead and restored him to life, she was confident and filled with belief that her land would be restored to her when the man of God said to go as well. She came back and what happened? He said, restore all that is hers from the moment she left until right now. Give it all back to her. God is trying to give everything back to you. God is trying to restore your 2019. He's trying to restore your 2020. He's trying to resurrect your building. He's trying to renew your body, praise God. He's trying to strengthen you in your mind, strengthen you in your mind, strengthen you in your business. He's trying to resurrect, restore some things in you and in those around you. But the catalyst for that starts with you. See, God is a gentleman. And the Spirit of God will never force us to do anything we don't want to do. But I'm submitting to you once again, the restore, Christ Almighty himself is looking to do something supernatural for you, but you have to do your part. It is the will of God for restoration to come forth from you. So remember hope, remember faith, remember obedience will bring forth that restoration and stop defining yourself by the world standards. We do that too often. Somebody tells us what we can't do, what we can't accomplish, what's not going to work because it worked for them this way. So what? God has a plan for your life that includes restoration and it may not look like the person to your left or to your right. It may not look like your parents. It may not look like your pastor. It may not look like your youth leader. It may not look like your bosses, but your journey is your journey and God has restoration in store for you. Stop paving your life or patterning your life based on simply the world's standards and what it dictates as what's necessary and ability. God is a supernatural God, and we read this on last week, who can do exceedingly, abundantly, above anything we can ask or think. He's a restorer, and God has restoration in store for you. Go ahead and say it with me. God has restoration in store for me. So my expectation is restoration, glory to God, for 2022. But we got to stop defining ourselves by the world standards. Renew God's, renew the confidence that's on the inside of you because God is living on the inside of you. Lastly, I'll say this about that. David said this in Psalm 51. Now, he says, create in me a new spirit. The NRV says it this way, create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew in me a steadfast spirit within me. He goes on to say in verse number 12, restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Again, we want to renew our confidence of God on the inside of you. And for some of you, some of us today, what that will require is forgiving yourself. It's letting some things go. Cleansing your heart, glory to God. He says, creating me a pure heart or creating me a new spirit. God is renewing some things. So allow that renewal to take place in your heart where you're now able to move forward. Cleanse your heart from last year's perspective. Cleanse your heart from the fear or trauma of 2020. Cleanse your heart and, or your attitude from what took place in 2019. The, rest, rest, the restorative God is performing restoration in your life but we have to allow them. So that starts with renewing our mind, renewing our spirit, and renewing the things that are taking place in our body, coming to a new place to allow the new ventures to come forth, glory to God. Also, that means for some of us, we gotta repent of some things. Sometimes when we hear that word, it sounds like something bad, but you know, repentance simply means it's to change and go in the opposite direction to make a 180 degree turn from where you've been. So if you've been heading in a direction of things being bad, heading in a direction of trauma, heading in a, in a direction of uh, letting things fall by the wayside, now turn your face back towards God 
and let him be for you and do for you everything that he intends that for you in your life. Some of us, that means we got to have some contrition because real contrition leads to repentance. Sometimes we're not repenting and we're not making that change or turn because we really aren't contrite. We really aren't sorry. And in our heart of hearts, we don't want to admit it. And it's leading us to a place where we're saying, I'm not doing that. But I love David because the Bible talks about how even though he was not perfect, David was always quick to repent. He always wanted to be right with God. I'm encouraging us this year. We want to make sure that we're right with God. So renew your confidence in him. Renew your connection with him. Renew your spirit, man. So now we can move in the direction that God wants us to be in. Repent. Just say, Lord, I'm sorry. I missed it. I just want to come home to you. I just want to be in your presence. I just want to allow the fullness of what you have planned for me to manifest in my life. Thirdly, I'll say this. Renew your connections. Connections make a big deal. And sometimes we can take them for granted. Sometimes we can take for granted the relationships that God has blessed us with. You know, the, the, the scripture in Hebrew says that we ought to be careful to not uh, entertain angels unawares. You never know who God's placing in your life, what he's placing in, who he's placing in your life, where that may be and at what juncture to be a blessing for you. See, some of us didn't grow up with all the help that's, that we're supposed to have. And sometimes when people are sending help or attempting to help, you don't let it happen. We want to make sure that we're renewing connections, glory to God. The Bible tells us it's not good for man to be alone, which also says to me, it's not good for you to do everything by yourself as well. Proverbs says this in chapter 17. It says a friend loves at all times and a brother in verse number 17 is born for adversity. The Amplified says this, families stick together in all kinds of trouble. Things may not always be perfect. They may not always go the way that we planned or we thought they would be, but we want to make sure that we renew our connections. Some of us over these last couple years, you allow some bridges to be obliterated and be blown up. What do I mean by that? My grandmother used to always tell me, you know, don't burn bridges. And I understand that now. And it's simply as we think about the whole methodology and reason for a bridge, the reason for a bridge is connectivity to get you from one spot to the other and keep that ability to move from A to B wide open without any hesitation and without any stumbling blocks. Whatever bridges that you've burned, that you've obliterated, that you've torn down last year or the year before in your life, expect restoration. Renew those connections. Again, I might need to be the one to repent. You may need to be the one to repent. You may need to be the one who says, I'm sorry, but do it because it's well worth it. It will posture you to be would be where God wants you to be because you've allowed the renewal in your heart to take place. He says a friend loves at all times. Love like your heavenly father. God loves us with a unconditional love, which means no matter how we mess up, how we miss it, however bad it's gotten, God still receives us back home. Allow people to be reformed allow people to be uh, uh, at a place where things are resuscitated and they're received back. Allow people to live the life of redemption that the blood of Jesus has secured for them. <laughs> Woo! Proverbs 17. You might want to write that one down. I'm telling you, it'll last you all, all year. Now, Colossians says this in verse number three. I got one more, and we're going to close right here. Colossians 3 says this, Verse number 13, it says, make allowances for each other's faults. I'm just going to repeat that. Make allowances for each other's faults. It says, and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Remember, God has forgiven you. Now, I love what it says there is because it says make, make allowances for each other's faults because it reminds us that we all have faults. We all have idiosyncrasies. We all have stuff. Come on, somebody. 
But he says, make allowances for somebody else's as well and forgive anybody who offends you. You can't renew connections when you're holding on to resentment or you're holding on to bitterness or you're holding on to stuff that happened way back there. I think about Paul and all the things that happened to him. But one of the things you see with Paul is he didn't seem bitter. He didn't seem upset. He didn't seem to hold on to it. It didn't become baggage for him in his life. It didn't overwhelm him and stop him from getting to the next great thing. We want to be like that. We want to make sure we're not shouldering and holding on to those things that are hurtful, allowing it to become bondage for us. So eliminate the resentment, eliminate the hurt, eliminate the things that have been ruined in your life. Use the wisdom of God to help you get there. Use wisdom if someone hurt you purposefully. Forgiveness does not mean you have to allow the wrong people in your life, but it makes we want to make sure that we're allowing the right people in our lives. Glory to God. Amen. Make sure things are good on good terms with not just your spouses. Make sure it's on good terms with everybody. Glory to God. You know, in those uh, uh, mystery movies and what do you call it, gangster movies and stuff like that, you'll hear people talk about not wanting to live, having to look over your shoulder. Well, we don't want to live like that. We want to make sure that we have good connections, proper connections. We want to build bridges instead of obliterating, obliterating them. We want to keep things together. Glory to God. If nothing else, if, if maybe there's some relationships that aren't for you. You heard me say this before. Some things that now have to be uh, uh, set to the side in order to move forward. But there's a way to do that without obliterating or burning the bridge. Keep things amicable, keep things peaceable, because again, the God of peace, the spirit of peace, the fruit of peace is living on the inside of us. We wanna do things the right way so that we make sure we have the right results as we go forward. God wants to renew us from the inside out. And when we're renewed from the inside out, our connections are good, our confidence is good, our commitment to the Father is good, because we're allowing our spirit being the real us to have ascendancy over all the negative, all the things that are carnal and all the things that are unlike God. Again, we're not perfect, but if God said we had the ability to do it, then that means we does. Excuse me. So I'm trusting that the power of God on the inside of you, the love of God on the inside of you will bring you to a place where I'm willing to make the necessary and requisite changes to my heart, to my spirit, to my mind on the inside that allows me to flourish on the outside and be the blessing that God has birthed you into the earth to be to everybody you encounter. Guess what? There might be some people who don't like you, as you would say, or as we would say, they're not for me. That's not for us. That's great. But still operate from a place of righteousness. Do the right things at all costs. Now, for those individuals who are not born again, who aren't saved, don't have a relationship with Christ right now, you haven't come into the knowledge of the truth of how much he loves you, of the mere fact that God is for you. As I mentioned, I want to pray with you and pray for you because restoration is in store for your life as well. God sent his only begotten son in, into this earth to die for you and to die for me. So we can live a life of restoration, a life of redemption, a life glory to God where all the right things can be restored so that we can be our best and be at our best. Now, I want to share one last scripture with you. and We're going to close right here. Second Corinthians chapter seven says this, and it's on the screen as well. And it says, for godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation. Not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. He says, godly, godly sorrow produces repentance that leads to salvation. What he's really saying right there is that, you know, there needs to be some real contrition, but there needs to be some true reality and true, um, I'm sorry there in order. And when that happens, it really does lead to salvation. He says that godly sorrow produces repentance. Now, Paul wrote this as he was writing to the church of Corinth 
And he was saying, even though I may have had to say some things or write some things that may have produced some sorrow in your heart, I want you to know and understand that that godly sorrow only produces and bring you, brings you to a place of repentance. And that repentance, that making that change, that renewal in your life, it'll lead to salvation. So if that's you, I want you to get in on this prayer today. I want you to make that change, make that decision in your heart right now that God is for you and you want to be for God as well. i like to pray with you and pray for you today that you walk in the restorative power that God has for you, that you walk in the redemptive work that the blood of Jesus has already secured for you. So with heads bowed right now, eyes closed if you're in a safe place to be able to do so, I want you to right now just settle your mind I want you to just listen to that something on the inside. I know that something on the inside right now that's speaking to you is the Spirit of God because He's the only one that reproves the world of their wrongdoings and calls people to Him. So if you're not born again, you're not saved. I want you to get on this prayer. You can just lift your hand right there where you are. You can put it down. You can say, that's me right there. I know you may have family members or others in the room with you right now, but I want you all collectively to be in agreement and get in on this prayer. The Bible tells us if we just say our sins, we confess our wrongdoings to God, you know what, he'll forgive us and he cleanses us of all wrongdoing, all unrighteousness. The word also tells us in the Bible that, you know, if we declare out of our mouth that Jesus is Lord, we'll be saved. It says everybody who believes, God will save. So if that's you, I wanna pray with him for you. And maybe you've gotten away from God and now it's time for you to reconnect, renew your relationship. This is for you as well. So I want everybody in the room to say the same thing with me as we lead you in prayer this morning. I want everyone to say it together, get on the same page so no one feels singled out. We are family of friends. We are the body of Christ and we're all in this together. So go ahead, get in on this prayer with me if you would. I want you to say this after me. Dear Lord Jesus, Come into my heart, come into my life, and change me now. I believe with all my heart, and I declare out of my life, out of my mouth, that my life is redeemed, my life is restored, because Jesus is Lord. I receive him right now, I receive his love, and I receive everything that he has in store for me. And today, I declare that I'm sorry for however I may have messed things up. But I thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. I am restored. In Jesus' name, I'm saved, and I receive your Holy Spirit to live on the inside of me. Amen, amen, and amen. Right now, you're born again. You're saved right there where you are. You've been redeemed. Your life has been restored. Come on, you, there's no uh, fireworks going off. There's no huge alarms that may be sounding, but I guarantee you there's probably a sense of relief because you now know you're in the good graces of God. But guess what? You always were. You just made your way back home. So thank you. I commission you, but most importantly, I want to take this opportunity to applaud for you because your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Jesus is Lord of your life, and restoration is also in store for you. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Now, before we sign off, we're going to give individuals an opportunity to sow into the kingdom of God. Uh, there's going to be a number that will flash on the screen, which is the number for you who just prayed that prayer of salvation with us, or who just repented and, you know, allowed God to... Uh, uh, receive the forgiveness that you've already uh, set aside in your heart. There's a number on the screen that allows you to uh, contact the ministry, and we'd love to continue to pray with you, pray for you. Uh, also, there'll be some information on the screen that gives you an opportunity to text to give and sow into the kingdom of God what we're doing here. This is your year of restoration. This is your year of reclaiming, restoring, rejuvenating, renewing, recovering some things in your life that the enemies attempted to steal. So that information is there on the screen. 
we know that we honor the Lord with our substance and with the first fruits of everything that he's given to us. So this is your opportunity to sow back into the kingdom of God. Um, again, there should be designations for you to mark as tithes, offering, or just uh, benevolence. Or we call them, of course, gifts to the poor or gifts to those who are in need. So there's an opportunity to do such. I just want to say thank you as well from Pastor Mignon and I for continuing to sow into what we're doing here at IC Nova to allow us to do what God has called us to do. We thank you for that. Well, I know many of you have done what the Lord has already placed on your heart. So I want to have you just go ahead and lift your hand up to the great high priest. And let's not just thank him for this opportunity. Father, we worship you with our giving. We say thank you for the opportunity to sow into the kingdom of God. And we just pray that more lives will be saved, more souls won. Individuals will come into the knowledge of the truth of how much you love them, of the redemptive work and the restorative power of God that flows in their lives. We command the angels of God right now to go forth and prosper this seed as it's planted in good ground here at IC Nova. We trust you, Father God, that the needs of every household sowing is met with an abundance of side. We pray for increase. And Father, we just pray right now that the needs of this house are met as well, this church body with an abundance of side, so that we continue to go forth in the vision that you purposed and ordained for this ministry. We say the same shall be for each household present today, and we thank you for it now in the name of Jesus and by his blood. Amen and amen. Glory to God. God is good, and he is good all the time, and I want you to keep your expectation on restoration. God is renewing you from the inside out, so let him continue to perform that perfect work on the inside of you. Go ahead and lift one hand high towards heaven as we release with the benediction. Father, we just declare the blessing of numbers upon your sons and daughters. And we trust you, Father God, to keep them, to bless them. We trust you, Father, to make your glory to shine upon them, that you will be gracious to those who are under the sound of my voice on today. And we pray, Father, you're opening doors for them that no man can shut. We declare peace upon them whereby there's nothing missing nor anything broken. All is well. All is restored. We receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Pastor Mignon and I love you. Our family loves you. The ministry here is supporting you. Thank, Praise God. Thank you for supporting us. Join us back here on next week. Will you know family matters in Jesus' name. God bless you.